Hi friends, today I am going to talk about the next topic that is fungal keratitis. Coming to introduction, in spite of increasing awareness and recognition during the last 20 years, fungal keratitis still remains a diagnostic and therapeutic challenge to the ophthalmologist because of the following factors. First is, it has a tendency to mimic other types of stromal keratitis. The second factor is, it may be enhanced inadvertently if topical steroids are used and its management is restricted by the availability of existing limited amount of limited amount of antifungal drugs and their penetration into the ocular tissue and their effectivity coming to the incidence of fungal keratitis in the developed world the incidence of fungal keratitis is 6 to 35% of all the microbial keratitis whereas in the developing world its incidence is about 22 to greater than 50 percent of all the microbial keratitis the prevalence rate of the fungal keratitis is about 80 to 90 cases per lakh population coming to the most common organism Prevalent in the tropical and the subtropical country is the septate or the filamentary fungi whereas the most common fungal agent in the worldwide is candida. Coming to pathogenesis, fungi first of all enter into the corneal stroma through a epithelial defect in the cornea. This epithelial defect may be caused due to various reasons such as trauma to the cornea or in a contact lens wear, bad ocular surface or previous corneal surgeries like penetrating keratoplasty etc. In stroma, next the fungi multiply and causes tissue necrosis and inflammatory reaction. Then the organisms enter deep into the stroma and through an intact desmet membrane it can also enter into the anterior chamber and into the iris. They can also invade the sclera. The spread is due to the fact that the blood borne antibody and cell mediated immunity may not reach the avascular tissue like cornea. Coming to various risk factors of the fungal corneal ulcer, number one is trauma with plant matter or vegetative material. The second cause is topical medications such as steroids and topical broad spectrum antibiotics used for a longer period. The third cause is systemic use of steroids and the fourth cause is corneal surgeries such as penetrating keratoplasty or any refractive surgery. The fifth uh, cause is Chronic keratitis which may be herpes simplex, herpes joster, vernal or allergic keratoconjunctivitis or neurotrophic ulcer. Then the sixth cause of fungal ulcer is diabetics, chronically ill patients, hospitalized patients, AIDS patients, leprosy, malnutrition and alcoholism. The various causative uh, agents or various causative fungi can be basically divided into four types. One is yeast, the second one is filamentous septated fungi, third one is filamentous aseptate fungi and the fourth one is dimorphic or diphasic forms. Coming to yeast or the non-filamentous fungi, they are basically candida species candida albicans or cryptococcus species coming to the second variety the filamentous septated species they are basically aspergillus species or the fusarium species and the other uh, species are alternaria curbularia and cladosporium species coming to the filamentous aseptate uh, fungi they can be mucor or rhizopus species the diaphagic forms are histoplasma, cochidiodes, and blastomycosis. Coming to the various clinical features of the fungal corneal ulcer, first we shall talk about the symptoms. 
The fungal corneal ulcer can start 48 hours post trauma. The onset is slow and the symptoms are less compared to signs. The various symptoms are pain, photophobia, lacrimation, redness and blurring of vision. Coming to the various signs of the fungal corneal ulcer, we can see first of all on examination of the conjunctiva, we can see conjunctival and ciliary, circumciliary congestion. On examination of the cornea, stromal infiltrates can be seen which are elevated from the surface. And a large, large or small epithelial defect can be seen which has the following characteristics. The defect has a hyphae or branching pattern, irregular and feathery margins. That is, its margins are uh, feathery and it has a dry and rough texture. The various manifestations can be according to the filamentous fungi or the yeast. In cases of filamentous fungi causing fungal ulcer, the typical picture is a feathery grey yellow stromal infiltrates with dry epithelial surfaces with satellite lesions. Ring infiltrates can also be seen with indistinct margin. In cases of yeast uh, causing the fungal corneal ulcer, we can notice a yellow white round focal infiltrate with epithelial defects with intense signs of infiltration. In cases of yeast, if they cause the fungal corneal ulcer, it is a more localized ulcer. Coming to the various differential diagnosis of the fungal corneal ulcer, there are other uh, differential diagnoses are bacterial keratitis and viral keratitis. We can differentiate bacterial, viral and fungal keratitis basic upon the following points. First coming to sign and symptom. In bacterial keratitis, the symptoms are greater than signs. In viral keratitis, the signs and symptoms are nearly similar. In fungal keratitis, the signs are greater than symptoms. Coming to onset. In bacterial keratitis, it is of acute onset. Viral is subacute and fungal is chronic onset. Discharge. Bacterial keratitis, the discharge is purulent. Viral, it is mucoid and fungal, it is mucopurulent. Coming to corneal sensation, the corneal sensation is intact in bacterial keratitis. In viral keratitis, the corneal sensation is absent. Also in fungal keratitis, the corneal sensation is absent over the lesion. Coming to ulcer surface, in cases of bacterial keratitis, there is a lot of slough and large infiltration around the ulcer and the ulcer has a well-defined margin. In viral keratitis, only infiltration is seen and dendritic or geographic pattern of the ulcer can be seen. In fungal keratitis, the ulcer is typically dry, uh, dry looking and it has feathery margin Satellite lesions can be seen and it has ill-defined margin and endothelial plaque can also be observed. Coming to hypopion, the hypopion in cases of bacterial keratitis is sterile. In viral keratitis there is no hypopion and in fungal keratitis the hypopion formed is unsterile. And also the hypopion in cases of bacterial keratitis changes with posture of the head. That, it move, that is, it moves on the movement of the head, whereas in fungal keratitis, the hypopion does not change with posture of the head. The upper border of the hypopion in bacterial keratitis is horizontal, whereas in fungal keratitis, the upper border is convex. Coming to response to, to the treatment, in cases of bacterial keratitis, the response to treatment is very good, it is immediate. In viral keratitis is good and in fungal keratitis the response to treatment is poor that is uh, it is very slow. Coming to the course of the keratitis in bacterial keratitis the recovery is very fast. In viral keratitis it is subacute and fungal keratitis it is chronic. Coming to the various sequelae of the fungal corneal ulcer. Fungal corneal 
also can eventually lead to loss of vision, corneal opacification, total or partial corneal perforation, secondary glaucoma, scleritis and fungal endophthalmitis. Coming to the various lab diagnoses of fungal corneal ulcer, first is scrapping can be done with Kimura spatula or BP blade number 15. Then potassium hydroxide 10 to 20 percent wet mounts can also be prepared. The basic stains uh, used for the fungal corneal ulcers are gram stain, gymsa stain, and other stains are gomery, silver methanamine stain and lactophenol blue. The culture media used for fungal corneal ulcer is saboroid dextrose agar, sea blood agar and brain heart infusion agar. Other lab diagnosis which can be done are corneal biopsy which is done after 72 hours when the smear and culture are negative. Anterior chamber tap can also be done to aspirate the hypopion or the endothelial plate. Another method is to pass a sterile braided 80 silk suture through a deeply seated lesion. Then this suture is laid on the culture medium to observe the growth. Coming to the treatment of fungal corneal ulcer, the antifungal agents mainly used are uh, basically polines, imidazoles, pyrimidine and triazoles. In the polyne group, the agents are natamycin and amphotericin B. Imidazoles include clotrimazole, miconazole and ketoconazole. Pyrimidine group includes 5-flucytosine and triazoles include fluconazole and itoconazole. A number of New triazole derivatives such as voriconazole, rabuconazole and posaconazole demonstrate potent broad spectrum antifungal activity. The various preparations available in the market are natamycin is available as a 5% suspension, amphotericin B is available as 0.15% solution, nistatin is available in 1 lakh units per ml as ointment, 5-flucytosin is available as 1% aqueous solution. Clotrimazole is available as 1% cream. Miconazole 2% cream. And ketoconazole as 2% suspension. Or orally as 400 mg per day tablets. Fluconazole is available as 0.3% aqueous solution. For the treatment of superficial keratitis and deep keratitis, in cases of fusarium species, natamycin 5% suspension is used for superficial keratitis and for deep keratitis we can add oral fluconazole or ketoconazole. In aspergillus, the basic treatment is amphotericin B 0.15% and for deep keratitis we can also add oral fluconazole or ketoconazole. In cases of candida, for we, the basic uh, first line of management for candida species is amphotericin B 0.15% as drops. For deep keratitis, we can add oral itroconazole or fluconazole. Then coming to the natamycin 5% sus suspension, its frequency will depend on severity of the condition. Candida species respond better to the amphotericin B 0.15%, fluconazole 2% and miconazole 1%. Then further treatment to be done is scrapping should be done every 24 to 48 hours and the treatment should be continued for about 4 to 6 weeks. Subconjunctival injection of miconazole 5 to 10 mg of 10 mg per ml suspension is indicated in cases of a severe form of keratitis, scleritis and endophthalmitis. The systemic drugs which can be administered are fluconazole or ketoconazole and these are also indicated in severe form of keratitis, scleritis and endophthalmitis. Adjuvant treatment for fungal corneal ulcer are 
A broad spectrum antibiotic can be added to prevent secondary bacterial infection. Cycloplasics such as atropine or homatropine or cycloprotolate can be added to give uh, symptomatic uh, treatment. Further, anti-glaucoma medications can be given in presence of a hypopion. For example, Timolol 0.5% eye drop can be administered twice daily or a tablet acetazolamide can be given 250 mg one tablet two to three times per day. Multivitamins one capsule per day can be added and if the patient is diabetic, strict control of sugar should be done. And there should be the improvement of nutritional status of the patient. In spite of adequate and appropriate antifungal medication, if the patient uh, symptoms does not improve, then surgical treatment can also be done. Surgical treatment is required in approximately one third cases of fungal keratitis due to failure of medical treatment or perforation. Surgery is usually indicated within four weeks due to failure of medical treatment or due to recurrence of infection. Surgical treatment <coughs> in the form of intracameral amphotericin B injection can be given. Recent reports suggest a favorable response with 5 to 10 microgram intracameral injection of amphotericin B in non-healing deep fungal keratitis. Another surgical management is vasculoplasty that is transplantation of a conjunctival flap with prominent blood vessels can be done. This may be considered in those cases where the ulcer do not respond with maximal antifungal medication for one month. The next coming to further surgical treatment of fungal corneal ulcer Therapeutic penetrating keratoplasty PK can be done. It should be performed sooner rather than later in cases not responding to aggressive antifungal medication. This arrests the progression of the disease and retains the anatomical integrity of the globe. The fresh tissue is always preferable. The recipient button should have a disease free margin of at least 1 mm. Intraoperative anterior chamber lavage with amphotericin B should be done after cutting the recipient button. After the therapeutic penetrating keratoplasty, about 85% of cases maintain the structural integrity of the globe, of which in 30% of cases the patient might get some useful vision. Next line of surgical treatment is evisceration. In cases of fungal endophthalmitis, the visual prognosis is very poor and evisceration is necessary to avoid the orbital spread of infection. Thanks for watching this video. Have a good day.